In this video, I'd like to talk about how to find the angle in a triangle when you're given the different side lengths. And you might recall from the last video that we essentially looked at the opposite problem where we were essentially given the angle and we had to find one of these missing side lengths. And to start a problem like this, we're gonna be using our trigonometry. And you might recall me saying in the last video that anytime I do a trigonometry problem, I always write SOHCAHTOA at the top just to remind me what the different trigonometric ratios actually are. And we wanna find this angle, though in this case we actually have all three side lengths. So we know what the opposite side of the angle is, we know what the adjacent side of the angle is, and we also know the hypotenuse. So the truth is, at this point, we can use any of these trig functions. And for really no reason at all, I'm going to use the cosine. So the cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So we can rewrite this as the cosine of the angle is the adjacent. So that's the side next to the angle. That's this three here. And we're dividing by the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the long side. So dividing by five. And so we have our trig ratio set up. But the question is, how do we solve for the angle here? And to do this, we need to introduce the idea of an inverse function. And more specifically, we need the inverse cosine function. But the general idea of what we're gonna do is that if you have a function and you essentially put it inside the inverse of that function, then what you get back is whatever your independent variable is, so x in this case. So let me walk through a more specific example. Let's say we have f of nine and we wanna take the inverse of that, or essentially we're putting f of nine into the inverse function. And my claim is that this is just equal to nine. So it's just equal to whatever's on the inside. And this should make sense if you think it through. So when we start on this inside, this f of nine, the regular function notation is essentially asking, given an x value of nine, what is the y value? And for now, I'll just say that the y value is w. We don't know what it is, but we can call it w. And then when we try and take the inverse function evaluated at w, what this is asking, remember inverse functions are essentially starting with the y value and asking what the x value is. So this is saying given a y value of w, which x value gave you that y value? And we know that an x value of nine gives you a y value of w, so that's why this is just equal to nine. And if it helps, I encourage you to maybe think of this with a more concrete function and more specific values, but this general pattern always holds. So what we're gonna do, since we have the cosine of theta is equal to 3 fifths, we're gonna take the cosine of theta and put it inside the inverse cosine function because like in these examples, when we put the function inside the inverse function, what we get back is just the independent variable. So this would just be equal to theta. So we're gonna use this idea to essentially solve for theta here. So let me just make a little bit more room. So essentially with this equation, what we're gonna do is take an inverse cosine of each side of it. So we have the inverse cosine of the cosine of theta, and this is equal to the inverse cosine of this three-fifths. And like we said, when you put the function inside its inverse, that you just get back the independent variable. So we essentially have that theta is equal to the inverse cosine of three-fifths. And this right here, you can actually put into the calculator. You might notice if you have one of those TI-83 or 84 graphing calculators that you can find these buttons by hitting the second button, and they're usually located right above the regular trig functions. So for instance, the inverse cosine button on the calculator is located directly above the cosine button. You just have to hit the second command to be able to access those different buttons. And what you'll see when you actually evaluate this by putting it into the calculator 
is that theta is approximately 53.13 degrees. So remember, this was from our triangle, our right triangle, where we had a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, and it was this angle right here, that's that 53.13 degrees. So with that in mind, let's look at another example problem. So let's say you have some other right triangle where this side length is 7 and your hypotenuse is 10, and we want to know what this angle here is equal to. So again, I'm going to set up my SOHCAHTOA so that I can figure out which trig ratio I want to use. And what you can notice is that relative to our angle, we have the side that's opposite it, and we also have the hypotenuse. So when dealing with the opposite and the hypotenuse together, we want to use the sine function. So we'll set up that the sine of our angle is equal to the opposite side divided by our hypotenuse. So we can rewrite this. The sine of theta is equal to 7, since that's the opposite, divided by our hypotenuse of 10. And once you have this trig ratio set up, we now want to solve for theta. But just like our previous problem, we want to use the inverse function. Or more specifically, we want to use the inverse sine function. Since we know that if we put the sine of theta inside the inverse function, the function and the inverse function essentially cancel each other out, and what you're left with is just that independent variable, theta. So we're going to apply that to our particular problem. So we're going to take an inverse sine of each side here. So we have the inverse sine of the sine of theta is equal to the inverse sine of 7 tenths. And we know that the inverse sine of the sine of theta is just equal to theta. So theta is equal to the inverse sine of 7 tenths. And again, we can just plug this straight into the calculator. And it will give us some approximate answer. And what we get is 44.43 degrees. And let's do one final example. And we'll again start with some right triangle. And let's say this time we don't know the hypotenuse, but we know that this side is 2 and this side is 6. And let's say we want to know this angle here, theta. So I'll write our SOHCAHTOA. And relative to this angle, it looks like we have the opposite side and we have the adjacent side. So notice that the opposite and the adjacent are paired together when dealing with the tangent function. So we can set up that the tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite, which is 6, divided by the adjacent, which is 2. And now that we once again have our trig ratio set up, we want to solve for theta. And like the two previous problems, we're going to need to use an inverse function to do so. So what we can do is take an inverse tangent of each side of this equation, since we know that on the left-hand side, when we essentially put the tangent of theta inside the inverse of the tangent, then what we'll be left with is just this independent variable. So in other words, the inverse and the function essentially cancel each other out. And over on the right-hand side, we'd have the inverse tangent of 6 over 2, which we know is 3. And when we actually evaluate that with the calculator, what we find is that theta is approximately 71.5. 5, 7 degrees. So this angle right here is about 71.6 degrees.